Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We're continuing our romp through the Eurocord deck building options and today we're looking at reservists as well as rifle with a particular filter and that's the AMX 13 and hopefully you guys will see why in just a minute. We still have, have bike fish with us again today. We will for the rest of the series as well just to talk about the options that you have and what you want to take for your first infantry card. Ready. So when it comes to Eurocore, we have a whole ton of infantry options. And the reason we filtered it down by this transport in these categories is when we're looking at kind of the traditional deck building structure of having a cheap line infantry squad, um, one of the things we look for in those squads is their transport. And if you look at the AMX 13 VTT, as you see it pinned there on the screen, you're going to notice two things about it, which are really going to make it one of the strongest picks um, that you can have for a five point transport of the entire game. First off, we have a Browning strapped to the roof. Um, Brownings are very good at assisting and dealing lots of damage to infantry squads. They're of very high suppression value, um, nice HE output, and especially when they come on something as cheap as five points, it's very easy to get them masked. The second thing is three armor on the frontal facing. That means that we've cleared a pretty key armor breakpoint where a lot of very commonly available lighter AP weapons simply cannot kill this thing in one shot. So it's gonna take two to do it. Um, multiply that by how many of them you can get in play, and suddenly they're a lot harder to deal with. Gotcha, so that does make a lot of sense, especially we consider other sort of boxes, I believe from West German tend to have one frontal armor, but it does mm -hmm. limit us if we want that transport to basically three options, the reservist, the base chasseur, and the chasseur 85, and Personally, I take the reservist, but I think there's a couple of decisions you have to make for yourself here. Do you want to talk about, uh, maybe let's start with reservist and the base chasseur, and then we'll move on to considering the chasseur 85. Well, we're going to start with base chasseur because we're going to yeet them out the window immediately. <laughs> um, base chasseur kind of combined the, the downsides to chasse 85 with the downsides for reservists. So as we have the rest of this conversation, let's just understand that base chassers are terribly inefficient for their point cost in terms of if we're aiming for point efficiency with this card and the infantry squad contained within them is just not very good if we're aiming at having more quality infantry come out of the card. So I, I kind of want to have us define our terms there for just a minute because we're talking about efficiency in a number of different ways and I, I think if I'm interpreting correctly one of those ways is actually can this thing kill appropriate targets for its role and the other is just for this cheap uh, cheap unit what you want is more stuff on the board and for that sort of point efficiency per strength or per HP value it's hard to beat the reservists so what you want out of line infantry instead of reservists is you want them to be more capable of actually taking your opponent's points off the board, which reservists don't tend to be very good at doing. Is that sort of what we're evaluating here? Kind of. Um, really what we're looking at here is the combined cost of these units, because as we as we were, we were talking about the AMX 13 VTT, that is no matter what choice we make out of these available units, that is where a majority of the killing power in an anti-infantry sense from this card we're going to get hmm. so none of the options here because they are either regular or militia trained infantry are going to be particularly good at killing other infantry um we can also talk about the launcher side of things but i i don't want to go there yet <laughs> so when we're looking at line infantry what are most useful thing they're going to mostly do is be a 10 hp bullet sponge that by virtue of not being a vehicle take more than one shot to kill um, depending on what exactly shooting at them we can you know say it takes you know three shots from your traditional blue four tank um you know to get them down to one hp whereas three from a typical red four tank will kill it you know there's all sorts of weird math we can do with that but fundamentally these are things that are meant to get shot while your high value units you know your your infantry that's actually capable of killing other infantry your infantry with high ap launchers your nice ifvs your tanks are getting are not getting shot instead gotcha so, so this is the meat shield we're slot yeah and the nice thing about reservists in this is they're they're letting us get the 10 hp sack of meat and an amx 13 vtt oh. for a total of 10 points if we go to base chasseurs we're paying 50 percent more or 150 percent of the total cost 
to really not get anything else out of it. Their launcher's the exact same. And with the Lorac 73 only having 14 AP and being 10 RPM, as soon as you run into anything with three frontal armor, neither of these squads are going to do particularly well against it. If they were to try and fight the VTT that they come in, it would take them two shots to kill it. At 10 RPM, they're going to shoot incredibly slow, and they're going to be panicked by the time they get that second shot off. So they're probably going to miss. Gotcha. That's not exactly a recipe for success. It's not. <laughs> so let's move on to, then to the Shaster 85, and this is probably where discussion of the launcher becomes relevant, because... They still have the NF1. Mm -hmm. Is the primary relevant here as well? The Mott 49 and the Chasseur versus the FAMAS? Uh, when we're talking about a regular infantry squad, the amount of times that that's actually going to become a relevant factor is slim to none. Um, unless we're dealing with elite infantry um, versus regulars or you know some other major mismatches like that, what's really going to come down to winning infantry fights is who shows up with more fire support. Gotcha. So not really that relevant. The tertiary is the same. So the big difference here is you're paying five more points and you get the LRAC F1. So the F1 has a couple of big benefits. First off, it's a little bit more accurate. Um, it's also longer range. So you're going to get some better accuracy scaling in close range environments such as forests. But one of the bigger upgrades here is going to 19 AP. 19 AP is enough to start to one tap um, some you know, more heavily armored vehicles into that three armor value section, you are going to be able to one tap them for the rock where you would not be able to with the Lorac 73. Gotcha. And it's so, still, it's not enough AP to reliably be taking on heavy tanks or anything like that, but peeling apart mm -hmm. your opponent's fire support, as you said, when fire support wins fights is definitely a relevant thing. I do just want to point out 700 meters while it is longer than 455 is pretty standard for most of the, well, mm -hmm. bog standard to good, launchers in the in the game especially for line infantry so 700 it is higher but it's only relatively higher it's not like it's an exceptional long range although 60 percent accuracy i think is is fairly good so my question then we seem to have crossed chasseurs off the list and that leaves us with 15 point chasseur 85 versus five point reservists so really what this boils down to is the sort of thing you're looking to get out of this card. And that can depend on it a lot on what the rest of your infantry tab looks like, because the rest of the easy infantry tab has a lot of flexibility to it. So if you find that, you know, you're wanting more of, a, of an infantry that is capable of occasionally doing something funny in a fight, and you're willing to pay for that capability, Chass 85 are definitely the way to go. A 19 AP launcher is going to be a lot more dangerous than a 14 AP one without all the other things considered. Um, having a FAMOS and a NF1 mean you can actually engage other infantry um, outside of like a, you know, panic reservist squad. You're probably not going to win that fight without being shredded up by yourself, but you know, it's, it's something that can happen. It enables, it enables funny. Um, whereas reservists are, if you feel the rest of your infantry tab has gotten really expensive, you can take reservists, get that cheap meat, get that cheap um, machine gun box fire support. Um, the main downside to the reservists in this case is because they are militia training. You'll notice they only have a 15 kilometer an hour off-road speed. They are incredibly slow to move around. If you try and move them through a forest, you may as well go AFK for five minutes and wait. They will still not be there when you get back. Um, but really, it just kind of comes down to a lot of how the rest of the deck is going to play. For somebody who's brand new starting out, I would recommend Chass 85, just because they enable you to do a little bit more um, versus the reservist kind of really locking you into a specific style of infantry play that may not be comfortable for you. Yeah, and, and particularly the reservists, like I, I run reservists when I run Eurocore, um, and I've played that on ranked up to about Major Lieutenant Colonel, which is not it's not a brigadier general but it, it's also you know not private corporal as well so it, like yeah. moderate performance and the reason i run reservists is because my style of play with Eurocore, i tend to buy my entire tab of mortars and for me mm -hmm. my mortars are what win the infantry fights and when that's the case reservists are just fine because they tell me where my enemy is and then my mortars do the killing so um it looks like we have another case of two valid options here I run the reservists and expensive other infantry, and then I rely on fire support and mortars. If that's not your style of play, if you want a bit more flexibility, it sounds like the recommendation from Bikefish is the Chasseurs 85. Is that uh, accurate? 
reflection, you think? Yep. And if somebody else who runs reservists uh, for much the same way you do, you know, it definitely is a style of play. Um, and personally, to me, you know, just having the ability to get cheap A and X 13s and specifically build them up in mass as time goes on just adds a lot of value, especially when you do get into a situation where it's like, oh, you know, my enemy just has some infantry in here. I'll soften them up with mortars. I'll make sure they're shooting at the reservists and then suddenly will be upon you. Jump grabbing. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, well that'll wrap it up for our first uh, comparison in the infantry tab. We should have a couple more for you, and we'll see you again real soon.